Good day and welcome to a brief course on eBeam. eBeam is the software and hardware technology that turns any screen like this one into a whiteboard. Um, so let's get started. Uh, the eBeam uh, consists of four main components that we're going to use anyway. First is the pen and receiver. This is the pen, that's a receiver. The tool palette, which is the primary software we're going to use. Uh, scrapbook, which is a little whiteboarding uh, piece of software. And the PowerPoint tie-in. So let's get started. The first thing is the pen. The pen is battery powered. So if it runs out of power, which we, and we don't know how long these last yet, so I'm expecting quite some time. All you do is unscrew it like this, very carefully, and there's a AAA battery in there. And off you go. The pen sends infrared receiver, uh, sorry, sends infrared signals uh, from this little black band to the receiver. Uh, so it doesn't give off any light that you can see, uh, and it doesn't um, it doesn't do much that you're going to notice other than buzz a little bit when you're using it. Um, big thing to note is to not push on the screen. So if you're, I'm, I have not turned the software on yet, but if I were to touch the screen, I just need to touch very briefly. I don't know if you can hear this, but actually I'm going to bring it up and you can hear it here. You can hear it buzz. Don't push hard on the screen. You're going to damage the screen. We don't want to do that, obviously. There are three inputs on it. Uh, the first is the small round button. That will start the eBeam software if it's not already on the screen. And it will position the uh, palette. So I'm just going to click, click, click. Wants to turn it on, wants to turn it off. Okay. Then there's the rectangular button uh, above it. And that's right click. So I put this on the screen and I press the right mouse button. It's going to bring up the right click menu. Pretty straightforward. And the third and most important is the white tip at the end. That uh, is the effectively left click. So I'm going to do this and press it down a bit. I don't know if you can see that, but there it is. You can probably hear it. And that's just left click, um, standard left click. Uh, the evening works really well, except in the top corners. It's not very accurate up here. It's Close, but just not quite, and that's because the receiver isn't, you know, higher up. Um, but uh, it's great for what we're doing. So let's get started with the tool palette. The tool palette uh, has several modes that we're going to cover: mouse, markup, highlight, scrapbook, and PowerPoint. The mouse in mouse mode, it's just that. So I'm going to uh, just consider this a mouse and just touch the screen, and I can launch whatever I want to with it. Um, you know, my computer. Again, it's just a mouse, so nothing tremendously exciting there, but it's going to be very useful for uh, getting through things like PowerPoint. Next thing is markup mode. Now, this is the most interesting. Um, you can see right now that it's on mouse mode. I'm going to change it to markup mode. And markup mode brings up a number of features. Um, but before I get to that, uh, I'm going to show you to go back and forth, because right now, if you notice in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a screen annotation. So when I write on the screen, it's, you know, writing on the screen. Um, and sometimes people get confused and think, well, uh, now I just want to go press the start button or do something else, even with the keyboard, and you can't. You need to go back to mouse mode. And this will come up and say, hey, would you like to save this? I'm going to say, no, I don't want to save it. So again, that is markup mode. That, the mouse, is mouse mode. And you need to be in mouse mode to do most of what you want to do. Okay, so let's go on to markup mode. In markup mode, there are a couple of uh, things to note. Uh, most notably, there is the color, so I'm going to change this to, you know, this yellow and draw some pretty stuff on the screen. Um, and there's thickness, so I'm going to go over to this um, little slash on the side here, and I'm going to choose the thickest one, and now I'm going to do the same thing. And you can see it changes the thickness and color. Pretty exciting, huh? There's also a highlight mode, so I'm going to click on the highlight here. And um, now highlighting yellow and yellow is kind of silly, so I'm going to do just something different. It's just going to choose green, and you can see that it highlights over top which is quite handy. There's also um, an uh, erase feature. So if I want to scrub that out, I can do that if I've made a mistake. Okay, that's uh, the big features of the tool palette. So let's move on to the scrapbook. Now the scrapbook is actually in the tool palette. So I'm going to change to the tool palette. Again, it's going to ask me if I want to save it. And um, I'm going to say yes to this. Actually, I'll, I'll, say, uh, I'll say no to this. I, it's not important. Um, 
Uh, and what this lets me do is uh, get to the uh, scrapbook. If I had said yes to that question, you want to save this, it would have brought me into the scrapbook. But I want to show you how to launch a scrapbook separately. So, scrapbook is this icon right here, which, you know, looks like a scrapbook. All of this does take a second or two to launch, so just take note of that. So I'm going to grab this window and bring it over, and uh, which I could do with the mouse or the keyboard. And uh, the scrapbook has um, a number of features that you would expect. First, I'm going to go back into market mode, and I'm just going to write something like hi. And then I'm going to uh, change the color, and I'm going to go to highlight mode, and I'm going to change the color to a yellow highlight, and I'm going to highlight that just like crazy. There we go. And maybe I'll do a smiley face uh, with, um, with that. There we go. I'm going to put little ears on just for fun. Okay, so again, you get the idea. It's pretty straightforward to use. Uh, about the only thing people have screwed up with this that I've seen is as they're writing, they put their fingers, because they get nervous, they put their fingers on the buttons, and then they're writing and things are happening, and it's because they're touching the buttons, and that's not a good idea. So let me show you a few more things about the, uh, about the uh, scrapbook. The first thing is full screen mode. So I can go over here to this icon, it looks like full screen, and boom, there it's full screen. And I can go back down here, you know, and I can write, do what I want. And I can go back down here and change it to not full screen. And you know, there that is. I can add a page. You'll see over here, it's kind of like PowerPoint. You'll see over here that there's a, um, uh, you know, your PowerPoint slides, and I want to click an additional page. Common sense. I'll do another happy face. You know, I can mark up a map. I can do whatever else I would like with this. There's also a gallery over here uh, with a number of built-in, um, um, you know, graphics that you may find useful. So if I want to just put this map in, you know, I can do that. There, you feel free to play with that. You can spend all day in it. Next thing is the camera. Now I'm using the camera already, um, so let's uh, see how I'm going to bolt this in. Um, the camera is this icon here, and I'm already using it, so uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I can't use it twice. Uh, but if I were to press that, I could then select uh, Add as Object after it had uh, recorded uh, a picture, and that would let me. Uh, you know, take a picture of who's in the room, say I want to do a, you know, a, an inventory of who's here, or somebody wants to hold up a map or something, you want to include it, that's really the easiest way to do it. So you just click on this icon, it'll bring up the webcam, uh, and then you can always tell if the webcam's on because our webcams have a little white button on the bottom, a little white um, LED on the bottom. When that's on, it's on. Also, it'll preview on the screen so you'll be able to see it. And you just click Add as Object, and boom, you'll get a picture of it. Um, once you've got that, say you wanted to edit it, uh, I'm going to say this is the picture, which of course it isn't. It's just a, a photograph, I should say, which it isn't. It's just a graphic. If I want to uh, edit it, say I want to crop something out, say somebody is in a corner and I don't want to show that, I can simply um, um, double click on this and then resize it um, to that. There we go. And now I can just move that around and we're on our way. Okay. A uh, nice feature is duplicate page. Say you've worked on this, you've got a whole whiteboarding session done and you're ready to go, uh, and then you decide, well, you know, we want to go another way with this, but we don't want to change what we have. Well, easy to do. Just click duplicate page, which is this icon right here. And you have exactly the same page. So this I'm going to write a two on. Let's go back to market mode. I'm going to change the, just for fun, just to keep this going, I'm going to change the um, color to uh, or purple or whatever that is. So this is page two and this is page three. So I can see each of the pages. Now when I'm done with this, uh, say I want to send it to somebody, well, which is the most useful thing to do with a uh, whiteboarding application. You can save it as a PowerPoint, you can save it as a PDF, uh, you can save it as an ESB. ESB is their native application, and um, if you save it as a PowerPoint or a PDF, it, it locks the content to whatever you put up on the screen. But uh, if you save it as an ESB, which is its native, again, scrapbook, uh, eBeam scrapbook, um, we can install the software on your PC, and then you can edit each of the elements individually. It's, um, uh, you know, and then you can save that as a PowerPoint or whatever, or whatever else later on. Okay, so the last notable thing here uh, is PowerPoint mode. And PowerPoint mode is pretty neat. So let me get out of this. I don't have to, but I'm going to. I'm just going to say, no, I don't want to save this at all. Um, now, I can start a PowerPoint from scratch, or I could uh, build, uh, or I could already have one um, going. 
because we're just doing this now, I'm going to start one from scratch. So let's just build one quick. So I'm just going to go and um, design, and I'm just going to choose something just so we get, you know, um, something interesting here. There we go. So I'm just going to write in here. There's some stuff, and I'm going to write in here, uh, you know, page one. It's actually the cover, right? And that's the that's that one. And I'm going to do another one down here, and uh, I'm going to call this uh, slide three. Okay, so there's my presentation. It's pretty meaningful. Um, now I can go into here and I can uh, click on the slideshow at the bottom here and note what happens here. That will change to a little PowerPoint icon. See that? Now, when I write this up, I can do things, oop, let me go to markup mode. I can do things like this. I can go to highlight and do things like that. Um, I want to go back a, back a slide here. And because uh, I realize that I've missed something on page one, and I want to uh, let's do this. I want to underscore that. That's something I really want people to pay attention to in my in my course. And uh, now I'm finished this, and uh, say I wanted to save this. Well, it'll prompt you. So as soon as I'm done, I can either skip. I'll skip through, skip all the way through, but I could press escape and skip it, or finish finish PowerPoint any way of, any way I would I would like any way you would normally finish it. So there you go. And you can see that these annotations, as they're called, have been maintained. They are there. Um, I can click through them, of course, with this because it's in, it flipped automatically back over to uh, mouse mode. Now, if I try to save these, it'll ask if I want to save those changes. And I'm just going to force it. But uh, again, if I save these, I'm going to save it on the desktop. And save. And I'm going to close this. And just to prove it, I'll open it back up. And there it is. That's how you use the e -beam. Uh, One other quick point is, uh, and I mentioned it earlier, but just s some people find this annoying to be in the way, so you don't have to have it around. So right now, I'm going to go into, um, I can simply press this button and it goes away. Okay, so, but it's there. Again, I'm just pressing the little button. And also, if it doesn't start, if the software doesn't start when you when you press the button, um, what you want to do is launch the e software down here. Okay? And that's that.